Okay, so we are going to be factoring trinomials, actually quadratic trinomials, <clears throat> ax squared plus bx plus c, when a is greater than 1. Now, before we jump right in, we're going to do a little bit of review when a equals 1, just because... I showed the area model when we did that, and you may have felt like the area model was unnecessary, but when A is greater than one, the area model can be very helpful. So I do want to review when this is simple and look at the area model because that will help us moving forward. Okay, so a little review. X squared minus four X plus three. Let's identify our A, our B, and our C. And we're going to make our puzzle where the B is up top, A, C is down below. And we're going to have to figure out two numbers that multiply to make A, C, which is 3, and they need to add to make B, which is 4. And we know that what they need to add because what's going to happen is the two numbers that we get here are going to become this minus 4x kind of split up. Okay, so I'm going to find the factors of 3. Oops, b is negative 4. So I need the factors of 3 that are going to add up to negative 4. So since they have to add to a negative, I need to have negatives. They multiply to a positive, so negative 3, negative 1. Multiply to make positive 3, add to make negative 4. And what's going to happen is these are important because what that did was that took minus 4x and that broke it down into negative 3x minus 1x. And that's going to help us moving forward, okay, um, you may look at this and say, well, my answer would be x minus 3 times x minus 1, which is true. Again, when x or when a is greater than 1, it's going to be a little more complicated than that. Um, but that's why we're doing review here. So let's look at the area model. All right, so my first term here, my x squared goes in the first box. Our constant goes in the last box. And then these two numbers we came up with right here, those are going to go in these two boxes. Okay, as of right now, you know, they can go in either spot. And with the area model, what we want to do is we will then come up with the information on the sides that will create what we found inside. So I know for for this term or for this term here it would have to be x times x to get negative 3x here it would have to be x times negative 3 is the only way to get negative 3x here x times what makes negative 1x it would be negative 1 x times negative 1 is negative 1x and then finally for my last box here Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3, so I know I'm good, and that would end up giving me x minus 3 times the quantity x minus 1 as my answer. This is the same process that we can do with our trinomials where a is greater than 1. Okay, It's a little more complicated, but if we follow this process, um, we'll be okay for this method. And then I'll also show you a, a secondary method. So let's go straight to an example. So we're going to factor 2x squared plus 11x plus 5. Same type of process. Identify our a, our b, and our c. 
make our puzzle where the B is up top and the AC is down at the bottom. And this is where things start to become different because our A is greater than one. My number at the bottom is not found anywhere in my trinomial as 10. It's the two times the five, okay? Process is still the same. I need to find two numbers that multiply to make AC, which we know is 10, and they're going to add to B, which is 11. So 11 is positive, 10 is positive, so I know I'll have two positives. They need to add up to 11. 10 and one fits. Now from here, we cannot jump straight to our factored answer like we could up here, okay? Up here, our, my negative three was the constant of my first binomial, negative one was the constant of the second. You can test this out on your own, but I'm telling you right now, x plus 10 times the quantity x plus one is not going to get you this quadratic trinomial, it's not, okay? So, we're going to continue on. Um, there are two methods. So we're going to look at the area model method first. Okay. So for the area model, we're going to start just like we did before. And my first term was 2x squared. My last term is five. And what's going to happen is the 10 and the one will give me the two terms that are going to, um, basically 11x gets broken down into 10x and 1x. And that's what's going to go in these spots. It doesn't matter which one goes where. I could have put 10x here and 1x here. It doesn't matter. Okay, but we're following the same process that we did up above. Okay. So now here's where it gets a little tricky. Up above here, I could I knew that this was x squared, so I could just go straight to x times x. Okay. Here's a little bit different. I have I'm going to have a 2x times an x is the only way to get 2x squared, right? So 2x will go here or x will go here. We have to strategize. Okay, so you're gonna have to sit and think, okay, well, if I put 2x here, I'm going to have to have something here to multiply by my 2x that's going to give me 1x. It's gonna to have to be a fraction. So 2x times a fraction is going to get me 1x. So I don't think the 2x goes here. I think the 2x goes up top. And the, and the x goes here. Because x times 1 would give me 1x, right? Now, this is, like I said, this is kind of like a, you have to use some strategy. It's kind of like a puzzle. So for the 10x, 2x times what gives me 10x? The only thing is whatever I come up with here also has to multiply by one to get five. So it's, it's like another puzzle. The only option is a five. 2x times five is 10x. One times five is five. So now what we get are our two binomials. So I'm going to get 2x plus 1 times the quantity x plus 5. Okay. Now, method number two is called grouping. Now, for method two, for the grouping, it actually is uh, something that relies heavily on 
GCFs, okay, and being able to find GCFs, all right? So let me just kind of make those stand out a little bit for you. All right, so for method two, what we're going to do is we are going to rewrite our polynomial here, but instead of 11x, I'm going to use the 10 and the 1, the 10x and the 1x, okay? So I'm going to take the 2x squared plus 11x plus 5, and I'm going to rewrite it as 2x squared plus 10x plus 1x plus 5. Okay, so I'm, I'm splitting it up based on this puzzle, right? That's the 10x, that's the 1x. Then what's going to happen is we're actually going to group, or we're going to use the associative property, and we're going to group together the first two terms and the last two terms. If you look at the area model, it's kind of like I'm grouping these two together and these two together. And what we're going to do is we're going to factor out a GCF, okay? So factor out the GCF of each. Now, if I look at my first set of terms, I've got a two that I can divide out of each, and I have an X that I can divide out. So I can divide out a two X, and then I'm gonna write what's left over. So it's kind of like if I ignore this, this like part over here, I'm completing just factoring out a GCF, okay? So when I divide out, I get X plus five. So it's like I'm factoring each of these binomials, okay? Plus, that doesn't change. Now over here, this is prime, right? The only number I can factor out would be a one, which seems pointless, but we're going to write the one out anyway, and you'll see why in a second. Now what you hopefully notice is when I factored out the GCF from each, I'm left with a binomial that's exactly the same for both. And what I'm going to do is essentially, I'm going to factor out the GCF again, except in this case, the GCF is a binomial. Okay, what ends up happening is this common binomial here gets factored out and I have what's left as the second binomial that gets multiplied. So let's think about this for a second, okay? Because what I just did might look like, where did all that come from, all right? So on, on the side, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do something here, okay? I want you to look at this um, binomial for a second. We factored out a 2x, right? Before we do that, I'm gonna back up and I'm gonna rewrite this expression as 2x times x plus 2x times five. This is what we did when, we, when you did your factoring the GCF um, lesson, okay? I'm rewriting this term as a multiplication problem. I'm rewriting this term as a multiplication problem. And if you notice, then what we did was I had a 2x in common on both terms. So I pulled that 2x out and I multiplied by what was left over, right? What was left over is the x plus 5. 
And that's what I got right here. So all I'm doing on the last step is the same exact thing, except instead of pulling out a multiple, you know, two X numbers being multiplied, I'm pulling out what's being, what's uh, like an addition expression. So I have an X plus five in common. So I'm going to pull out the X plus five and then I multiply what's left over. I pulled out a common 2x, I divided that out, I factored it out, and then I multiply by what's left. Factor out what's in common, multiply by what's left. And if you look, I get the same exact answer as I did up above. Okay, let's try another one. And again, you'll be able to kind of decide what, um, what method makes most sense. Three X squared plus 10 X minus eight. A is three, B is 10, C is negative eight. Put our B up top and our A, C at the bottom. So we need our list of factors that are going to multiply to make A, C or negative 24. And they're going to add to make B, which is 10, right? And when we think about our list of factors, I need a positive and a negative, but they have to add to a positive. So I'll need the larger amount to be positives. So the 12 will be positive and the two will be negative. So we get 12 and negative two, which means that 10 X is going to be broken down into 12 X minus two X, right? So if we, do the area model method first. I know that my first term goes in the first box, last term in the last box, eight. And then I've got 12 X in one of my boxes here and negative two X in the other. And this isn't too bad because um, for 3x, I know one, side's ha one side has to be 3x and the other side would have to be x to get my 3x squared. Um, when I'm deciding, I need to pay attention to my x's as well. Um, if I put the 3x up top, it's going to get me a fraction or a decimal to multiply to make my negative 2x, which is not going to happen here. So this has to be 3x on this side and it has to be x on that side. Then I also need to multiply something by 3x to get 12x, which would be 4. x times negative 2 gets me my negative 2x. And negative 2x times 4 is negative 8. So everything works out. And my factored set of binomials would be quantity x plus 4 times the quantity 3x plus negative 2, or x plus 4 times 3x minus 2. The other option is for grouping. So for grouping, we start with our trinomial. We complete the puzzle, and we end up with 3x squared plus 12x minus 2x minus 8. And then what we're going to do is we're going to break these up. Now, before I do it, when you've got subtraction here, we're going to add the opposite. We're going to do uh, complete the additive inverse because I don't want to lose the operation in the middle. If you just kind of drew parentheses around the minus two X, you might get confused and think that we have multiplication when we don't. Okay. So now I'm going to look at my first two terms and I'm going to divide out a common factor, the greatest common factor. So I've got to three 
and an x, then I can divide out of both. And I'm left with x plus 4. And over here, I've got a negative 2 that I can divide out of each. And I'm left with x plus 4. Now, when you're dividing out your GCF, remember our goal, our goal here is to have th these two binomials actually be the same. So when you're dividing out your second GCF here, you want to keep in mind that the goal is to end up with x plus 4. Because the last step is to say, okay, the, my numbers here are being multiplied. I'm going to factor out an x plus 4 from both and multiply by what's left. And if you see, it's the same exact thing that we got up here. All right, so again, either method works. The last example that we have, um, you're going to find that the grouping might be a little bit um, a little bit easier to uh, come up with our final factored um, answer here. Okay, example three. So I'm going to add a little bit of something to, uh, to this. 12x squared minus 2x minus 4. Now one of the things you need to be aware of is sometimes at the very beginning we can factor out a GCF from the start. And if you look, that's what you should always be checking for is factoring out any GCF from the beginning. And if you look, I do have a common factor of 2. So we do want to divide that 2 out. Okay, so we're going to divide that 2 out first. Then we're going to go through and um, we're going to take our expression inside here, this trinomial, and we're going to go through the factoring process. Okay, so my a is 6, my b is negative 1, and my c is negative 2. We're going to do our puzzle. We need them to add to make the b, multiply to make a c, negative 12 here. Multiply to make negative 12. So multiply to negative 12, add to negative 1. So that's going to be negative 4, positive 3. Okay. Which means that this negative x here is going to become a negative 4x plus 3x, right? Okay, so for the area model, and don't forget, right now we're working with this trinomial inside, but when we get our final answer, don't forget that we have a 2 on the outside. So after I do the area model, I'm going to end up with something that looks like that, right? Okay, so... For the area model, we've got 6x squared. That's our first, let me kind of color code this. I get 6x squared there, and I get negative 2. And then I'm going to take my negative 4x and put it in one of, one of the spots, and my 3x in the other. Now here's where the area model gets a little bit, um, it can get a little bit tricky. We've got to figure out what numbers go in each of our spots here that are going to multiply around to get this, to kind of fill in this puzzle. Okay, so 
for 6x squared, I could have 6x times x. I could have 3x times 2x. It wouldn't be 6x and x because I need it. I need one of these to multiply to 3x and one to multiply to negative 4x, and the 6 really isn't going to do that for me. So I know one of them will be the 3x and one of them will be the 2x. Okay, so um, if this was a 2x, I really couldn't multiply to make anything right there. So that has to be the 3x, that has to be the 2x. And then I need my last numbers to multiply to make negative 2. But they also have to, I can't forget about the negative 4x here. So 2x times negative 2 would get me my negative 4x. 3x times 1 gets me 3x. So if I double check all my math, that gets me my 3x minus 2 and my 2x plus 1. Don't forget the 2 on the outside. Okay, so it still wasn't too bad. You had to use a little bit of strategy, but we got it to work out. Okay, now let's do this with the grouping method. So we start out with, uh, oops, start out with the 2 times the 6x squared minus x minus 2. And this is going to break down into 6x squared minus 4x plus 3x minus 2. Right? Remember, we take this and we break it down into our two numbers from our puzzle. Then I'm going to group these two together and I'm going to divide out the GCF. So I have my two on the outside here. Now a common factor between these would be I have a two, right, and an x. So I'm going to divide out a two x from each and I'm left with three x minus two plus and here I've got 3x minus 2 already, which is what I've got here. So I'm just going to rewrite this. I'm going to basically divide out a 1. And what we notice is I have my common binomial here. So I'm going to divide out a 3x minus 2 and multiply by what's left, 2x plus 1. And that's it.